Okay. As always, this is part of a series. There should be an annotation somewhere on the screen to the playlist. I recommend watching the playlist from the beginning um, so that you don't get lost. Also, as I mentioned in an earlier video, I myself am learning HTML5 Canvas, and uh, I'm also making these videos teaching you. Uh, it isn't uncommon for me to do videos on stuff that I am learning. It helps me learn. And I also think that even though sometimes my explanations may not be 100% accurate, maybe they make more sense to someone else who's learning. Uh, but I try to be as accurate as possible. And today we're going to be going over curves. And I'm they're simple to do, but I don't know if I grasp the way they're drawn 100% uh, to explain it well or properly, so forgive me if this is not one of my better tutorials. Um, but there's two types of curves that we're going to draw today. A quadratic curve and then a Bezier curve, I think is how you say it. Sounds a little French. I don't know if that's French. Um, uh, if, if anyone knows if it's French, let me know. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, let's see if uh, I can get my window not to see if it get finishes shaking here. Okay, um, so I already have, I'm going to use Vim as my text editor. As always, that's what I prefer. I like it. It's lightweight, does, hi, uh, you know, syntax highlighting uh, for color coding. So that's all I need. Uh, use whatever text editor you prefer for writing your code. Uh, and I've already created the basic HTML file for our quadratic. Will you stop shaking? Sorry, sometimes compiz acts up. When you, with the wobbly windows enabled. Okay. Um, and we have our basic HTML document here. HTML tags, header tags, body tags. Within our body, we have our canvas element here. Then we have our JavaScript here in line, because once again, um, the, the code has to be called after the canvas is drawn. You can also do this in the header. Some people prefer it one way or another. I'm doing it this way just because that's how I learned working with the canvas. In the future, I may put it in the header, uh, depending on whether I'm going to be calling it immediately or clicking buttons. It could be in either place for either way, but um, yeah, different people have different opinions on how to do that, whatever you prefer. Um, so once again, we're going to be working with a quadratic curve here initially. Um, and Basically, uh, I don't even know, really know how to explain the difference between the two curves, other than there's context points, and then there's midpoints, and it seems like Bezier curves have more midpoints. I could be wrong on that. Let's just get drawing, and maybe you'll just understand from watching. Uh, so we have our context element here. It's a 2D canvas, and as always, we're going to context.beginPath. We've called that method, that function, and now we can start context dot move to. Remember when we were drawing lines? This is where we're going to start drawing. And we're going to give it an x and y coordinates. It's basically the left and top of the first point of where we're going to draw. Um, and we'll say uh, 188 uh, to uh, 150. So that's, if I remember correctly, that's. Um, 188 pixels over and 150 pixels down. I hope I said that right. Um, and also, I, I do like to give credit. Uh, this tutorial and most of my tutorials are going to be very similar to the ones on html5canvastutorials.com. That's where I learned. I'm not getting any kickbacks from them. That's just I learned from there. My tutorials are going to be very similar to theirs. I don't want someone going, oh, you stole this from their website. No, I, I took notes. I um, and my notes are based on what they taught on that site. You know, I change things slightly to make it better for me to understand. Um, but yeah, that's where I learned, so my stuff's going to be very similar to theirs. Context dot. Okay, so this is where we're going to call our method for the uh, quad. Let me look at the notes, make sure I spell things right. Quadratic curve, case sensitive, capital C there. Um, two. So we have our starting point, our move to point. So that's where we're starting at 188 uh, by 150. And now we're going to draw a curve, and we're going to draw it from 288 or 2288 0 
and 388 comma 150. Okay, so we did that. Let's give it a width. So just like other lines and elements we've drawn on here, uh, we can give it a line width, set that equal to, we'll say um, 15, and we'll also give it a color, we'll say context dot uh, stroke style equals and we'll say blue again. I just I like blue. I also really like black, but that seems kind of plain if I since that's the default, you know. Uh, stroke, which means draw it. Let's go ahead, save that, refresh our browser up there. So there is our little uh, quadratic curve. So let's start playing with these numbers. Obviously, the 188 and the 150 is where we're starting at, which is right here. So we can say 150, and this will move it to the left a little bit. There we go. Um, and, of course, this is the up and down. So if I move this to 110, it's going to move that starting point up a little bit. Okay, let's put those back where they were for the time being. And let's change some of these numbers and see what we get. So that is the position of our uh, center point, I believe, which is at the very top here. It's the center point of our curve. It's a control point. If I said center point earlier, I meant control point. Um, so if I was to move this to 150, which is further to the left than our initial starting point, we're going to get this should be stretched over here. So let's refresh this. There we go. Um, now, uh, let's put that back to where we were before. So we got our nice little curve there. Let's change our 0 to 10. Let's see what we go. I did that in another tutorial too. That's because I'm hitting the numbers while not in edit mode. Okay. So that lowered our position there. So let's put that to 100 and see what we get. We get a very low curve there. Uh, and let's put it back to zero now. And let's change this to 488. So that is our ending position there. And if we change this to 50, that should move that up. So what we've got here is we've got our starting position left and right. We've got our ending position, left and right. We've got our left and right, uh, our x for our center point, and our uh, coordinates for our up and down of the center point. So starting point, center control point, and ending point. That's what we've got with our curves here. And we should also be able to do a context dot line cap equals, I like round, because it looks nice. So now if we refresh this, you can see we got nice little round caps there. So we have now drawn a curve. And I hope changing each number showed you starting point, left and right, center control point, uh, uh, I'm sorry, not left and right, left and right, up and down. Center control point, we got it's left and right, up and down. And then we've got our ending point, left and right, up and down, or X and Y. Um, so that is a quadratic curve. Let's go ahead and save that. Let's go into now our uh, Bezier, Be Bezier uh, curve. Be Zier. And here we have got a um, different type of curve. It's going to be similar.
Now the Bezier curve um, is everything is going to be almost identical. In fact, I probably should have copied and pasted the code in here to save us some time, but it doesn't hurt to go over it again. Uh, it, it's almost the same as a quadratic curve, except for you're going to have more control points. Um, so we're going to give it more information here when we actually call that method. So we're going to say context.begin path, just as we always do with our 2D uh, drawings like this. We're going to say context.begin move to 200 and 150 will be our starting point uh, and then we'll say context dot Bezier curve with a capital C to capital T so we're calling this method Bezier curve to and we got to give it a couple of points here so we're going to say 150, we'll say 0, 300, 0, 300, and 200. And we'll give it the context a line width of, we'll do 15, since that seems to be what I always do. I think that's a good size. We'll say context.stroke style equals and we'll say red in this case and then we'll say context dot stroke and up here if I refresh there is our Bezier curve uh, so let's go ahead once again this is the starting position this is that point and this should be our ending position here that point but we give it some control points in the middle here and let's play with them let's set that one to 50 save it refresh so you can see we move that point over there uh, we can also move its y-axis uh, we'll put this to 15 here save that and refresh up oh, I, you know that I, I, I never do that in tutorials and I've done that in I think three of the tutorials in this series because I'm trying to type too fast. Okay, so let's uh, let's set this to back to ten, and we can see the movement here. Refresh. So very little movement there. Let's let's make it extreme and make it a hundred. Boom. Okay, so we move that point down quite a bit. Um. Let's move this one to 200, see where it goes. So we move that over. Let's make it bigger and go 500. Boom. And we'll move this endpoint to 800. Uh, no, let's not go 800. Our canvas is only 600 width. Um, Let's go 50. Why do I see? I keep on starting to type numbers. Just undo. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> it's at this point someone's going, she is because you used Vim. And yeah, it's, yeah, I'm typing stuff wrong. But could happen in any editor. Um, so there we made a little knot there. So let's move that uh, back to, let's say, 350. Boom. And of course, we've got our 200 here. Let's move that to 20. See the difference? Boom, all the way up there. So, let's see how many times I can say boom. Boom, okay. So we have our starting point, and then we have a control point here, a control point there, and our little ending point there. So the Bezier curve have two control points, control point one and control point two, give you a little more flexibility. But you can connect uh, all these path objects, uh, the curves, the lines, both the, the arcs, the Bezier curves, the quadratic curves. That's something we're going to get to in a uh, future tutorial, connecting all these, you know, and making more complex shapes with them. So that's it for this tutorial. I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you're enjoying the serial once it, serial? series. I hope that uh, if you do enjoy these uh, and you're looking forward to uh, the more advanced stuff and you're also enjoying these basics, let me know in the comments below. Give me thumbs up. Uh, I still have a lot of these videos to come. 
once again getting more, again getting more and more advanced on what we do and um and as always i want to say you know the html5 i think is a great thing especially the canvas and it really eliminates the need for for flash there were some things that we were kind of restricted a lot of things we could do with javascript before uh that 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 we could use to replace some flash stuff but there was a lot of stuff um you know video and audio stuff but especially the canvas stuff uh that we couldn't really do before uh especially with 3d stuff unless you had flash in in the browser and of course uh we all know flash is horrible and anytime you can have your browser do something rather than have a plugin do it all the better um so uh i'm loving html5 canvas uh i'm learning a lot and uh, I'm really looking forward to doing some cool stuff with the 3D elements uh, in the near future. So keep on watching. Keep on enjoying. Be sure to like, subscribe, all that fun stuff I'm supposed to say to get you to keep watching. And I hope that you do. And I hope that you have a great day.